Good day and welcome to your favorite sport program on TV Plus Sport. And today will be an exciting moment on the show. I am Muda Shirushitu. It has always been interesting um, from your feedbacks and comments on um, the program. Today will be something interesting. We're looking at um, table tennis. And we'll be looking so much about a particular table tennis event just started um, last year. And that's to do with the development of the sport table tennis through the youth. Um, the sponsor and um, the man, the brain behind the world known and spoken um, about table tennis in the country, that's talking about um, the Daniel Four Table Tennis Championship. Um, joining me is um, the president of um, Daniel Ford. It's good to have you on the show, sir. It's a pleasure. Oh, okay. Mother. Yeah, let's go straight to the point. Um, if we are a little bit behind schedule, and I know you've told me already that um, you have a few uh, minutes for, for the show. Um, why, 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 do we, why do you decide to be part of this wonderful tournament? Why do you decide to give back um, to the youth of Nigeria through this um, sport, table tennis? Um, I got exposed to live football, wrestling, boxing, and all that, being a local. But we have to encourage the youths of today. Um, table tennis is a very individual sport that I have nostalgia of in uh, Lagos, growing up in Lagos, uh, because um, to play table tennis, you don't need much. We used to call the ball egg and any contraption that you can use to eat the, the, the small ball is good enough and uh, you have people playing with um, disused um, door, uh, door, door, doors and you can play with anything. So it's a very popular sport, but I think often overlooked and not getting the attention it, uh, it, it deserves. We have had great champions um, over the years. And I think it's a way of connecting and getting the young uh, guys busy and off the streets. So, so what what was the next thing? What should we expect in this particular edition? And what have been the what's the benefit of the last time um, edition? And what should we be expecting in this particular edition in um, in December? Uh, this is our second um, um, competition, the Daniel Ford Elite Youth Table Tennis Championship for under 19 and under 15. When we started, we had a vision, a five-year vision for these youngsters to take over from the more established um, uh, players of today. And um, we rolled out a five-year plan thinking that um, they would start gradually to replace the uh, established stars. Uh, we had the first competition last year on the 21st and the 22nd of December at the Teslim Balogun Stadium. And I have to tell you that within six months, our, our um, inaugural champion, uh, Matthew Kuka, has now become the national uh, male champion and representing Nigeria at the All African Games, amongst many other things. Um, I received a letter of commendation from the African Table Tennis uh, Federation, who have described the competition as now the biggest um, youth table tennis competition in Nigeria. So, uh, what to look forward to uh, this year is a bigger, better uh, competition, more competitive, and um, we hope. It will um, make the front page of the news and um, inspire more kids to take up the sports. Yeah, I, I'm sure you are aware that um, one of the longest serving sports in the country, and some say West Africa, is a table tennis event. That um, the um, Asojuoba Table Tennis Championship is almost um, above um, even 60 years since. Um, um, it has been inception. What was the future of this championship like? Are we looking forward to something that is going to be perhaps, you know, the future is still far, uh, but is this something that we should be expecting yearly uh, so that we will know that um, every year is going to be on the, I know that it's already in the calendar of um, Nigerian Table Tennis Federation. But what was the future? What's your plan for the future of the, of the tournament? Oh. We, we have a long-term vision for this, and we hope to look back in 30 years that, oh, um, 
our champion in two, 2023 will be a patron or something of that ilk, you know. So it's a long-term vision and we hope to be here for a long time. Okay. We can see, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are asking us for the videos. For those of you asking for the videos of the last championship, you'll be seeing it on your screen right now, the video of um, the last um, championship as we speak. But now, uh, what, what was new? What's innovative? What's the, because we're all concerned so much about the prize money. Though I know it's a huge champ, um, competition, we don't get so much of um, the big, big, big prize money and all that. So, but tell us, what was what's the new thing about this um Championship. What was the innovation? What was the new thing added to this? Um, I have to commend the Nigerian Table Tennis Federation and the International Table Tennis um, Federation for working together um, to make this event uh, um, um, possible. Um, we are working towards a better version. You remember last year we had. Um, um, King Kanu, Kanu Wako, um, Nigerian Olympian and uh, multiple, um, you know, winner in various um, football competition. So this year would have some notable faces and supporters. Um, we would have increased prize money okay. and uh, coupled with that, there'll be two days of training by ex-professionals and uh, coaches um, just to get them, get the, 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 the participants uh, ready, you know, and a lot more that you should visit and uh, attend to see. There's also those um, the special athletes. I don't know whether that, that there will be a bit of involvement in the future because, um, you know, they also have that age kid category in table tennis that are special athletes that um, perhaps, do you think of you involving them in the future uh, of um, this event so that we can have um, the under 19, under 15 age grade that has to do with special people involvement in table tennis because you know at the last Olymp Paralympics we, the last Olympics we had none um, of um, our athletes that went to the Olympics gave us any uh, uh, medal but in the Paralympic we had the bronze medal from the table tennis event uh, are you looking forward to including that's the special athletes in, um, in, 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 in this competition in the next future? We anything that would um, enhance and uh, inspire, we would always look at options, and nothing is precluded from uh, making the competition a lot better. So we would uh, consider options. Okay, yeah, because I know that you you have just um, a little time um, for for the program before we go to the next topic that was planned um, also for you. Um, Tell people outside about how lovely um, they should participate in table tennis because, you know, a lot of people is we are in a football-loving uh, nation. So on, on that topic, tell us a bit about um, why they should get themselves involved in table tennis so that by December, um, this December will be having at that particular date, that's from the 1st and um, 22nd, there will be a lot of people coming to the Telsin Balogun Stadium to be part of this. So encourage them, um, guardians, parents, the youths there to come to Telsin Balogun Stadium for this wonderful tournament? Uh, the dates are actually the 20th and the 21st okay. of December. Oh, okay. um, the, the table tennis as a sport is a non-aggressive sport. It's a sport that you can have a table indoor, you can have it outdoor. Is not out of place in some parts of Lagos to see lights being turned on and tennis being played all through the night. Uh, um, why I like it is the fact that it's a family sport. You can have the missus, the dad, the kids, the boy, the girl play in equal measure. So it would be nice to see the family turn out on the day. You know, we want to encourage a lot of the. I have, uh, I've, I've started inviting some over 90s that still play the game. So, uh, and it will be very interactive this year. We would have a lot of stuff for uh, um, the, we have a lot of stuff for the older people, the families, there will be prizes as well, you know. So I want to encourage people to turn out and cheer the, the um, players up. 
Yeah, one, one interesting thing before we go to the next topic that we have is um, there'll be a two-day training for all participants. And uh, um, uh, um, can you tell us a bit about this? I mean, there'll be training that's to show that it's not just about the competition, it's about the clinic aspect of, um, of the program. <laughs> I, you know, table tennis is a game that people just pick up. And they, you assume that once you can serve the ball and return a, a serve, that you're good. So um, in trying to get the kids in the right path, on the right track from the get-go, we thought to, to, to come up with a training program because with a training program, it would help them, even for health reasons, you know, not to get yourself injured, um it, it's uh it's a spot that it's not very dangerous but um like most um most endeavors in life if you don't get it right from the get go bad habit setting so it's just to get them in um get professionals that have done it and been there to put them through and hopefully they will grow into the champions they they, they can be okay yeah, thank you very much on that particular topic. Uh, if you're just joining us, I've been speaking with um, Yemi Edu, who is based um, in UK, is the president of Daniel Ford um, um, International. That involvement it goes beyond just table tennis. So we'll go to the next topic, perhaps. He's going to share a light on his role. That's Nigerian sport and sponsorship. Um, a lot of people want to know so much about this because, you know, little spot in the country has been saying the lack sponsorship. You've been, you're involved not just in table tennis, then the Ford is also, that's the I do, our guest is also involved in golf and many several sports. I, I tell you, so what, what was it like, sport sponsorship in Nigeria, um, Yemi do what was it like um, to sponsor sport in the country? And why did you take the interest? Like I said, I grew up in a sports environment. I grew up um, exposed to the Sports City, uh, the National Stadium. Uh, I was a local boy, and um, I had the privilege of seeing a close uh, proximity um, um, to the stadium. stars that stars that my some of my contemporaries would only see on TV. Hmm. You know, we all have a part to play. The administrators, the, the, the athletes, the spectators, and um, sponsors. So as a, as a business, Dan Ford is very involved in CSR. That would be impactful. And we, it's geared more to the youth. Hmm. Um, so it's... Um, it's a direction that we've always upheld, both in London and now to Nigeria. So we're very active in the chess side of things. Only last week I was in Budapest to encourage the Nigerian Olympiad team and to um, encourage our uh, prodigy, uh, the chess prodigy, uh, Deborah Quickpen. Quickpen. So um, I would just like to encourage other companies to come on board. You know, it's not just about football. You know, um, this um, sports need our support. And um, it's not just about money. Um, like I said, there's training in this regard. Uh, th there is um, um, linking of the athletes to uh, platforms that would ensure their financial um, sustenance even post-career. So we we were able to get uh, Morris Ashley, the first um, chess black chess grandmaster in the world, and uh, who came to meet uh, Deborah Quickpen last week, mm -hmm. and is giving his time training her and preparing her to be the first female black black female uh, uh, grandmaster in the world. And the inspiring thing about Deborah is the fact that she lives in Yenogua by Elsa, mm. and she's already uh, um, the best female chess player in Nigeria, which okay. she attained at the age of 11. At the moment, she's number four in Africa and a um, very promising young girl. In interesting, uh, interesting because um, is, is, is where we, it's a long time country, I've witnessed an individual through his um, company that's been sponsoring um, sport. A bit, a bit of the highlight, um, 
um, Yemedu of what you, apart from golf, but rather I said golf, apart from um, chess and table tennis, do you have a future plan for other sports? Well, I, I, I think we we pick this too. There are other things we do. It's not everything that comes to the limelight. Okay. Um, but, but what I'm happy to do is to encourage others. Um, even if Scrabble contacted us, okay. you know. But you know, um, it's not that we have. Um, we are not doing this because we have money. Okay. We're doing it because we have passion. Mm. And you know, when you have passion. Um, things would happen. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if it was just money, um, I wouldn't be in Budapest last week. Yeah. So there are other ways of encouraging the sports. You know, even if you don't have the, the money, you can have the network to make some things happen. Yeah. And there's a lot where we are, we are doing um, silently that some will come to fall one day and they might not. Okay. Yeah, well said. Well said, um, um, Yemedu. And I'm sure your your time is, yeah, the time you allocated for the program today is almost um, um, over before we go into another topic. But I, I would like you to really give um, a, a note of advice, you know, because um, we have been watched in um, more than um, 40 countries. We're on DSTV, and a lot of uh, persons from Africa are watching you. And a, a bit of advice to someone that you don't, we have the passion, we also want to sponsor um, an event because I know one of the biggest chess tournaments um, that was well um, pronounced out was between Daniel, it was between um, the, the Guinness Book Record, Tunde Onokoya, and um, not, not forgetting Deborah Quickpain. And you've done so much for that. And that was a gathering of the best of the best in chess in, in Nigeria. I mean, I mean, I can imagine people watching you to tell them what they need to do also. Yes, that's the event I'm talking about. Um, you're, you're the person behind that wonderful um, event. Yeah, tell, tell people that they should also get themselves involved. Like you said, it's not just about money. It's about the passion. Some will have the passion and they want to do this. So just encourage so that um, the, the country will continue going um, when it comes to sports sponsorship. Well, I, I, I was in Accra uh, uh, three weeks ago, and I was able to convince my host to start a similar table tennis competition in Accra. Oh. And he's assured me that he, he's going to commence this year. Oh, okay. So the plan is, if it goes as planned, by April, around Easter, we have the Nigerian champion playing the Ghanaian champion, you know, the youth uh, champions uh, in Easter. And we alternate venues each year, you, yeah. know, you know, one year in uh, Lagos, the other in Accra. So people watching that want to um, come on board to, to broaden this, you know, will be happy to um, grow the sports, grow the interest. And where we are evolving, we are tinkering, and um, ideas are, are um, welcomed. And um, we hope that the, the vision of preparing these youth to take over the established players would come to fruition. Yeah, well, well said. Um, yeah, me, I do. I, I need to tell you a big thank you for, for giving us your time. And um, we, I hope we can relay your message back to your host in Ghana that we also want to have him on our, in our studio so that he can also tell us about his plan. Because, you know, Ghana and Nigeria are more than brothers. They, we've been living together in Amoni for a very, very long time. So that fusion in table tennis, because, you know, in West Africa, Nigeria is the first in table tennis. In um, Africa, Nigeria is the second battling with Egypt. So we want to see a fusion where um, Ghana and Nigeria will also have that unity to further the game of table tennis. So we want to host, uh, perhaps, have him or her someday to talk about um, this um, wonderful um, idea. Thank you very much, Yami Odin, for being part of today's program. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, Yami Odin is um, the president of um, Daniel Ford um, Foundation. He has done so well to continue promoting 
the game of sport um, in the country. And um, so far, so good. Um, we have a list of individuals who have used the resources. When I mean resources, both all ramification of resources, Abiola, MK Abiola, the later MK Abiola is called the pillar of sport in the country before he left. Um, we also have um, the Molade Okoya Thomas, um, who has been spon sponsoring table tennis in the country. Yes, um, in the new generation, let me use that word, is where we found um, Yemi Edu, who um, is giving his best to continue to support, support um, sport in the country. So he's, uh, he's just, um, been, we've just been speaking with him right now. So away from that, um, we go straight to chess. Yes, chess has got, yeah, Yami Edu also has sponsored chess. So we, he, that's why we keep talking about chess because, you know, ever since chess has a lot to do um, with um, us old secondary school. So this year, the 2024 PwC Chess for Change mentorship program took place at the Eva, Eva de la Jazz Secondary School in Barriga. For those of you that are used to Barriga, Eva de la Jazz is one of the most prominent secondary school, female secondary school in Lagos. So we had this, they had this edition of the Chess for Change and it's a mentorship program across um, eight educational districts in, in Lagos. Educational district means some schools in around the city of Lagos came together having a representative and students who were part of it. You, you see the highlight of um, the gathering of these youths um, together where they talk about mentorship, not just for chess, also about um, the future aspiration and many interesting moments um, for them. So it was a wonderful moment. So we didn't live there without um, speaking with um, stakeholders. We spoke with um, some of a girl and then one of the chess instructors, not forgetting the young man that spoke so well about what chess has done for him. So enjoy this wonderful um, interview with this lad. This is the highlight. So it's high time for you to just enjoy the highlight as we speak. Um, that's the classroom. You can see somewhere in Lagos, it has been going on in a very, very wonderful moment. And uh, we hope that um, we can get the best of them. So the highlight is something you just saw now. Yes, that's the highlight. Um, you can see Deva Secondary Schools gathering together to give the best. And there's a time, there's a moment of, um, you know, playing chess and questions about future, about aspiration were also in, um, in chess. So wonderful moment. And that's why, you see, when, when people come together to talk about sport, that's an avenue to take Nigeria to the next level. Nigeria is a sporting nation They've done in, in the world of chess. And like um, my guest also likely said, he was in Budapest where the 2024 Olympiad took place. And um, tomorrow we'll be on that wonderful moment on the show, um, our Plus Sports special, where we'll be having a very special guest who was in Budapest to, to talk about um, the Olympiad. So this has been going on. And um, it's high time for you to um enjoy this wonderful interview we had um, with the school girl school boy and the chess instructor the idea they have and the problems they found in their areas yeah. and the um, game in particular and the sessions and lectures has actually helped them know more about chess especially those who don't know more about it before and so help them more yeah. competition, chess competitions will go for yeah. the knowledge of the chess. I was introduced to chess. There are things I was able to observe about myself. The first thing was critical thinking. Chess helped me to think critically, even in situations which are not pleasant. I'm able to be, I'm able to overcome situations because of chess. And also, it also helped in decision making. I realized that ever since I started playing chess. The way I don't make decisions towards some situations has changed. I'm not making better situations. In fact, sometimes, before even some things even happen, before some things happen, I'm able to even predict. I don't even know if I should do that. Chess also helps with that because when you are playing chess, there are some moves that you are able to predict. So it also applies to real life experience. The mentorship program is a program from PwC to show the kids how they can actually make a chess in one aspect, reflection about chess and about life, how they can educate, interact, and have more problems with life. Your main benefit from the mentorship is about what? 
having the network meeting with all these people, meeting up with the sponsors. They have put so much for the show. Everyone is going to go into this. How is it that they are teaching them the aspect of life which they might have out of the confinement of their classrooms? moment and the tournament has been going on. The Chess um, for Change um, mentorship um, scheme has been going on for more than a decade and they continue helping the growth of, um, of chess. And beyond that, there will also be a Grand Slam. A Grand Slam means where the schools involved will come together to play chess and there will be a winner um, of the Chess Grand Slam. That's what it's called, a Chess Grand Slam. So chess has and we, there's a vision and a mission um, that both all stakeholders sponsoring chess and being part of the larger chess community as, and that's to ensure that every household should have a chess board at home. And um, is I tell you, one sport that has an equipment in every household, apart from football, yeah, we probably argue that football can be in every household because it's football, anything can stand for football. It's when they play, then you know, oh, this is playing football. But apart from the football, one sport that has a lot to do in the household is chess. The chess board is in my own personal house, and I'm sure a lot of Nigerians have a chess board at home to encourage them to be part of, um, of this. One other interesting thing that has made chess beyond just a regular sport is important to the aspiration and the um, IQ of, um, of young ones in growing up. It makes you think properly. It makes you stay focused in what you are, you are doing. So all these are uh, advantage of, um, of having a chess at home, not just having a chess at home. The other thing we, we people don't really talk so much about when it comes to chess is it serves as a source of income that many chess instructors in Nigeria that earn money, good money from schools, private tutors, secondary school tutors, they earn money for teaching chess to those that want to learn about chess. So chess is not just a sport. It's also just that we have football coaches. We have our chess instructors who go everywhere, household, to teach them um, about chess and the benefit of chess. So it's another source of income. And beyond that, we have a lot of book written about chess. A lot of book written about chess. So, so chess is, 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 is becoming something beyond sport. It's a way of life. Like I would put it, it's a way of life. That's why wherever you are with your lad, your children, in, in, in the community where they are youth, and you notice versus, um, there's so much of um, restlessness in, 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 in the youth, you can call them together and give them a chess board, like uh, what Tunde Onokoya is doing for Chess for Slum, where you have to make sure that young um, boys and girls in the street doing nothing, chess is a way of bringing them together, and the benefit that comes from sponsoring them can make them understand another way of life beyond the um, negative way of life they are used to. So that's why Tunde Onokoya has been doing so well with his chess. I won't just mention Tunde Onokoya alone. I uh, like my guest, wonderful he has done on uh, for chess. That's talking about um, Edu. Yemi Edu has done so well for, for chess. And not also that, let's not forget it, the Nigerian Chess Federation. The Nigerian Chess Federation has done so well, so well to promote chess. It has made everything easier. Uh, talking about um, the vice president who is accessible to all when it comes about innovation and all that to promote um, chess. And it's now becoming a way of life in, um, in Ife because there will be the 2024 Olojo Chess Festival that involved the Olojo, Olojo Festival, the way the only of Ife. Um, was part of last year's edition and it has promised to be part of. So you can see where culture and sport meets. And most of the time, when culture and sport meets, that's where you get the best of the best in, um, in, 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 in sport. So this year's edition also about um, the 2024 Olojo Chess Festival. While the festival is going on, there'll be a chess tournament. And that's where they have the fusion of the way of life of chess as the way of life and to also bring about the promotion of the people of um, Ile Ife, where, where the only of Ife is. And you know, these two way of life, festival, the fair traditions and culture coming and line together with the life and importance and benefits of chess. So all this is one of the reasons why you have to keep um, watching and keeping your time on um, Plus Sport. We do this Monday to 
Friday. And tomorrow, Saturday, is another interesting moment where we have um, Plus Sports Special. And like I said, our guest is... Um, yeah, should I let you know what our guest is going to be tomorrow? Our chess is one... is a national coach of um, Team Nigeria and he just concluded... Um, Olympia 2024 in Budapest, talking about Coach Obina. So it's we're looking at the importance of chess for tomorrow. You have to keep a date with that. And also looking at how you can get busy and earn extra income in an economy we are facing now in chess. So wonderful moment for, for chess community. Wonderful. And I will say personally, if you ask me, from this is the year of chess. 2024 is the year where we have experienced so much growth vast development in the area of sport. Away from that, we now look at, um, as I end up the program today, we want to look at um, the 2024 Colombia, um, 2024 FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup. Yeah, Nigeria couldn't make it beyond um, the, the group stage. They couldn't make it beyond the group stage. I think Nigeria left um, the group stage at um, the round of, um, of 16. And um, though we've done so well in this competition in the past, we got to the final where we have the likes twice, where we have the likes of um, Azizat Oshuala, and we were hoping that we can do more than that wonderful moment um, in, um, in, um, in, in Colombia. But interesting moment that um, there's so much to talk about um, in, um, in Colombia. Interesting moment, I tell you, and uh, football is a way of life. We also know that. So sport is not just about winning. It's not just about um, doing things to score or to win. No. F sport is about an extra way of life. So if you have something doing, we have a lot of people now going to several clubs. It's um, past them um, five in Nigeria time. Um, and some minutes... Um, to six. We have some people retiring to the field, retiring to the club. Some are holding their racket for squash. Some are holding their racket for bad meeting. Some are taking their basketball to go and have a nice time after an hour do they work in sport. So interesting moment um, in the game of sport. And that's more reason why you have to keep in touch with us every day to get. And if you're just joining us, you can check us on all our social media um, platform to get um, the best of the best in the world of sport. And information also coming is that tomorrow will be a very wonderful time on the show on Plus Sports um, Special, where we have the best of the best in the world of um, sport. Yeah, it's high time. We want to um, say it's a wonderful time on the program today. It's high time um, to say bye on to this um, edition of um, Plus Sport. Not forgetting that time flies when we are fun. If you just joined up, we talked about um, chess, uh, talking about also the 2024 um, Daniel Ford um, Table Tennis um, Youth Championship that will take place um, 20th and 21st of, um, of December at the famous, yes, that's one of the best indoor sports all in the country. We hope we have more of that. Um, that's at the Telsin Balogun Stadium, the indoor um, sport all of um, the Telsin Balogun Stadium, still going through several renovation. That's the pitch and every other thing. But that's where this year, second edition of um, the Daniel Ford um, Elite um, Youth Table Tennis Championship will take place. And also, we looked at chess. Um, we all look at sponsorships, sports sponsorship in the country. And Yemi Edu was also gave us the highlight and interesting moment to be expect between uh, Ghana and um, Nigeria. Yes, uh, let me don't let the cat out of the bag yet, but I know this year, next year, a lot is going on to ensure that Ghana and Nigeria will be united as we have always been. But in this area, in a particular interesting moment in table tennis. So we spoke about that. So if you are watching me from Ghana, yeah, this is where I am for the first time. You are watching me from West Africa. Anyway, you are watching me from, there will be something interesting between Nigeria and Ghana. And one of the brain behind it was my guest today, talking about Yemi Edu, the president of um, Daniel Ford um, Foundation. Also, we also looked at um, the, the 2024 PWC um, Chess for Change mentorship scheme that just ended some days ago at the Eva de Laja um, Memorial Senior Secondary School in Bariga. So, and there was so much to learn about that. And lastly, 
before I call it, uh, also I spoke about the highlight of the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup. I'm sure a lot of people are wondering why we want to know so much about Iguavon. Um, Austin Iguavon has been given a go-ahead in a more permanent um, position in term basis as the Super Eagles coach. There's more to talk about that um, tomorrow. We'll be looking to look, um, talking about that particular moment, whether Iguavon is good to go, whether it's not, or whether they should totally stop the search of a foreign coach. I think if my opinion counts that there should be an end for foreign coach when it comes to the Super Eagles. We've done so much in football. We don't need an expatriate to tell us about football. We are three times African champion. We have gone to the World Cup, the first country to win the Olympics gold medal for men's football. One of the first African country to go to all the Women's World Cup. We've never missed them. So we don't need an expatriate. That's just an opinion and a report in front of me. So I draw two cuttings on today's program right now, as you, I won't leave you without um, letting you know, enjoy the wonderful highlights of the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup. My name is Remain Mudashiri Shitu. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for Something it is.